You ask for it, Hollywood, California. We would be most happy to welcome you as our special guest aboard the CC-7107 to answer the inquiry of your television correspondent, Newman Bernstein of St. Louis. At that time, I will be pleased to tell you full details of the record run of this train. Signed, M. Parmentier, Motive Power Manager. That cablegram made possible a very exciting and interesting visit to the headquarters of the French Railways in Paris, France. It was this request letter from Newman Bernstein that sent our cameras there, and he says, I've read that a train in France recently traveled at more than 200 miles an hour. How about showing it on your program? Well, Newman, the fact is that two French national trains made this amazing record on the same day, and we found one of them at the Paris yards ready for our cameras. Now, outwardly, the train didn't appear to be radically different in design, but as we began to learn about the modifications and the painstaking preparations for the record-breaking trials, it became very clear that these were no ordinary trains. The preparation for the run began with a complete overhaul, special gear throughout, tested and retested. The transmission system modified, raised to higher ratios. The adoption of special solid monoblock wheels in perfect balance. But still, the CC-7107 was far from ready. As the undercarriage was being completed, other workers installed the overhead trolleys called pantographs, specially built devices tested in the wind tunnel. Everything had to be completely streamlined from top to bottom. The couplings between coaches were made permanent and streamlined, connections ensured by rubber strips. The rear of the train aerodynamically streamlined. A great variety of recording instruments were along the track and aboard. Following the test run, results were to be studied at leisure in the silence of the laboratory. In the first car, instruments checked the behavior of the train every second. The train was constantly linked by radio telephone with an outside command post, a special aerial fixed on the roof of the car for this purpose. All along the track, a wide range of instruments were installed. An automatic camera was set up in the driving cab to film the speedometer for a perfect record. Along the right-of-way, accordion-type barriers were stretched at the crossings for safety. All traffic was stopped and the roads and crossings carefully guarded. A last-minute checkup in the inspection pit. Everything movable sealed. Doors chained and locked for added safety. Finally, everything is set. The day has arrived. Just a few seconds to the zero hour. And there's the signal. And they're on their way. the entire run. The curve at Lamoth Station is taken at maximum possible speed, 75 miles an hour. And ahead are 28 miles of straight track. Already, we're doing 93 miles an hour. and 50 miles an hour. The dials give impressive readings, 4,500 amperes, 12,000 horsepower, 170 miles an hour, and already the record is broken, but still faster. 199, 202 miles an hour, 202 miles an hour. Sparks flying from the traction wire. Photographer's plane is left behind. The record is broken and the train slows many miles before brakes can be safely applied. They flash word to the command post the fastest run in railroading history.
Yes, it's a great day for the French railways. The officials and workers join together in congratulations. And the pantograph comes down. And so ended the record-shattering run of this historic locomotive. We're grateful to Monsieur Parmentier for his help in answering this request. And to you too, Newman Bernstein, you asked for it.